I'm back to solve the problem of unpainted miniatures. Let's speed paint up some Kellhounds from Battle Mech. Battle Tech. These are Battle Mechs. I should son of a gun. <laughs> Welcome everybody. We haven't met before. I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. And this series here on speed painting, well, I'm making another video because they're kind of easy to make. <laughs> And the whole goal of these videos is to show you a series of very simple techniques that you can apply to miniatures pretty fast and therefore solve the problem you have of unpainted miniatures because let's be honest with you, I'll be honest with you, everyone, we all have tons of those laying around and we should work on painting them and stop making excuses to do so. So today we're working on the Kellhounds, so one of the more famous military units from the Battletech universe. I've got two of their mechs right here. And this technique, once you kind of get it refined down, it takes about 45 minutes per mech. Now the two disclaimers here, actually three disclaimers, are one, the miniature's already primed. Two, this does not factor in the drying time for paint, in particular washes. So the idea is you've got several of these mechs you can work on, so while one wash is drying, you can paint up the armor of another mech and so on, and that's how you get down to that 45 minutes per mech time frame. And three, these techniques are for basically getting a good paint job for your units, so if you want to get your miniatures painted, this is a great way to do it. If you want to win a competition, this is not the great way to do it. So just get that disclaimer out of the way right now. All right, let's take a look at the paints you're going to be using today for this video. So first of all, we have a metallic undercoat to these miniatures, which involves a gray, uh, silver, and some sort of black wash. The armor itself then has like a medium red color. I've got a brown wash, which a good chunk of it spilled right here. And then I've got a little bit of orange that I use for highlighting. And then for detailing the mech with some of the windshields, missiles, and guns and things, I've got a blue, a bright blue color, and then my silver color as well. The actual first step, because I know I say that phrase a lot, is to prime the miniatures with a black spray primer. And I'm also using my 3D printed priming tool to hold the miniatures. You can find a link to purchase the STL files for this tool in the show notes of this video. Now the Kellhounds have their limbs painted black, but a flat black color in a miniature just looks kind of boring. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to dry brush gray all over the miniature, and we're looking for about a 60 to 75% coverage of this gray color across the entire miniature. And this is including both the limbs as well as the areas that will be painted red later on. For the areas that are going to become the red armor, we need to give them a metallic undercoat. So for this, we've got one more step of dry brushing to do. I'm going to take some metallic silver and dry brush over the areas that will eventually be painted red. Now we need to knock our dry brushing back a few pegs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a black wash, in this case I'm using Nun Oil from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints, and I'm coating the entire miniature in this wash. Now this is going to do a few things. First it's going to darken the metallic undercoat under the areas that are going to be painted red later on. But more importantly, it's going to take the grays that we put on the limbs and make them look darker, almost black in comparison to the bright red armor we add later. This way, we'll still have the black limbs that Kellhounds are famous for, but they're going to have a little bit of highlighting and detail going on instead of a flat black color. With the wash dry, now we can move on to painting the red armor of the battle mech. And at this point here, I'm going to be using my Artificer Layer Extra Small Brush from Games Workshop Citadel line of brushes. And the goal here, it's bit of a lofty goal, but the goal is to paint each armor panel individually and try not to get any of the red paint in between them. However, the neat little trick we have, because of the fact we painted this metallic undercoat underneath the armor panels, we can intentionally leave some of the edges of the panels unpainted. And this will allow that metallic silver gray color to show through, giving the effect of basically battle damage, weathering, or things along those lines. Now I want to bring out the details of the red armor a bit more and kind of darken things down just a tiny bit. So we're going to use a dark wash for this. I'm going to take Seraph and Sepia from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints and coat the entire area of red armor on this miniature. Now that the brown wash is dried, I want to give a little bit smoother appearance to the armor panels. We're going to go back and work on those a bit more. I'm going to take some thinned down red paint, the same color I used earlier, and go over each of the panels one more time. Now we're going to do some highlighting of the armor panels, but before we actually start painting things, you got to think a little bit about where is the light coming from and how is it shining on the mech. So you can see here I kind of have my hand up above one of the shoulders of the catapult here. Let's pretend that's your light source. What you want to do is edge highlight 
any of the sides of the arm are facing that light source. So in this case, if the edges are kind of facing upward or off to the right, we want to edge highlight those. For the actual edge highlighting process, I'm going to take a little bit of orange, which is a brighter color than the red that I'm using, mix it into the red to get a little bit of a saturated but still brighter red color. I am then going to go along all the various edges of the mech that I plan to highlight. And once again, I'm still using my artificer layer extra small brush because this is a nice fine detail step. With the armor panels done, I want to move on to fixing a few mistakes. Now in particular, I got two things I want to address. If any of the black limbs got a little bit of red paint on them, just take some flat black color and cover them up. It'll look perfectly fine. Also, if you manage to get a little bit of paint between some of the armor panels, which is quite likely, Take your black wash and just run that between the panels to kind of restore a little bit of a darkened color between them. Let's move on to working on some details. First off, I'm going to paint the windshield of the mech a bright blue color. Then I'm going to head over and work on painting each of the missile tips. And for this, I'm also going to use the same blue color because, well, it's convenient. And then finally, there are some medium lasers in the catapult. Well, they're usually medium lasers that are kind of in the bottom half of the torso. I'm going to paint those with a little bit of silver to make them stand out as well. Well, that looks like a pretty good speed paint for a Kellhounds battle mech. Let me put the catapult down right here and I'll bring over his buddy for the Thunderbolt that I painted earlier as a test piece for this process. And with that, I've got two Kellhound mechs ready to go for games of Battletech, a game of Armored Combat, Battletech Alpha Strike, and hopefully, at some point in the not too distant future, we can play some Battletech Clan Invasion when that shows up from its Kickstarter, which uh, the whole production schedule's, you know, messed up for various reasons, <laughs> for obvious reasons, if you know 2020. So hopefully we'll be seeing that sometime in the not too distant future. With that, we can call this video done. So once again, thank you guys all for watching. I guess I'm going to say once again because I haven't repeated myself yet, but I will probably before this video is done. If you want to see more of these speed painting videos, check out a link to the playlist in the description of this video if I remember to put it there. I'm kind of 50-50 on that. But I have one for the Stormcast Eternals from... Why did I say Star Wars Age of Sigmar? My brain is freaking broken tonight. Warhammer Age of Sigmar and I've also got one from Warcast or Neo Mechanica where I'm working on the Paladin Enforcers from the Iron Star Alliance. You can find, like I said, links to that playlist in the description of this video. Also, if you want to check out that 3D printed priming tool I was using earlier, I sell the STL files for that over on Etsy. Once again, link in the show notes. So hit subscribe if you want to see some actual combat robots. I'm going to be finishing up Micro Flash Delta, my three pound combat robot here, not too far in the future. And I'm slowly accumulating the pieces I need to finish the laser rifle to go along with my Minuteman. So we got a few long term series coming to an end here soon and that means there will be at least one new series after I have to pick it up and we'll talk more about that when that gets a little bit closer so hit subscribe and with that for the second time once again thank you guys all for watching and have a great week did I say I'm Jason the Tabletop Battlefield I might have said that I might have not I don't know anymore <laughs>